Alright, hey guys, what's up? This is Wolf here, one and only. Welcome to another devlog. This one is an hour long. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start it now. So the well I gotta pause it. So the first thing is this is devlog number 35, and we're gonna be learning a lot about sweet scene switching. I was about to say swing switching switching. Oh. <laughs> Words. Anywho. I'm gonna be learning a lot about switching scenes with portals and out of out of adaptive yeah adaptive portals or scenes adaptive scenes that's what it was called my brain is not working right now so i apologize for any mistakes i make anyhow let's go ahead and start it and i don't think i'm going to be here for the whole hour we shall see <laughs> i'll probably be in here for like half because I don't really have the whole time for an hour, do I? I don't know. I might just edit it together, just be like, hey, I slice this part, put this there, and just edit it. <laughs> I could do that. Don't don't tempt me. But yeah, that was a lot of progression with this, which was actually very strange because I, I've I've never watched a video of that talked about portals and switching scenes so this was pretty newish to me considering i've been everywhere and i didn't never i never thought about sweet scene switching i thought about just making like a whole entire island at that point but never thought about scene switching which became simple after a little bit of time to where i just made to where he got us to make like portals and a spawn point for those portals for when we go to that world and then we made adaptive which is which is either between you can choose adaptive or you can choose a portal and just port to that scene but that would be a lot of teleporting but i see why adaptive scenes exist so you can make it easier and better on frame rate which i didn't understand how pokemon you know did it into like game dev uh experiments actually showed it and it's basically like they unload a scene and loaded the scene in to any of the tiles that were connected which was strange to me i was sitting here like oh that's pretty neat so this is also how they traveled into new areas and made the whole route things pop up because it was a new scene and there was a new you know little title at the top left that's how they did it and that's how they also Put in music for that area and change the music for that area which for me i'm using boss collider 2d uh if i do make the 3d 3d world to 2d sprites i'm gonna have to change that collider to that 2d collider to a normal collider and just set up that whole box the interesting thing is gonna be once i'm done with all this how much coding i'm gonna have to change Go back and change and make it 3D. <laughs> that's that's gonna be very annoying. I wish I could have done it with this, but I didn't trust myself to not ruin the project from the start. And since I'm starting, I might as well do I might as well just, you know, learn the basics of 2D before I actually just start jumping my toes into 3D. Because I'm actually learning a lot more of the concepts it's a lot to remember though but it's weird because i've learned that the c sharp or yeah c sharp coding is basically another language because sometimes he'll say and and of and equal to stuff like that so it's basically like learning a whole new language so now i see what people mean when they talk about coding and languages and stuff like that it makes more sense to think of it that way. Which is interesting. But yeah, we're making a portal now to where if a player walks onto that portal, it triggers it and sends me to a different point. So this 
this took the whole week. <laughs> That's why I didn't upload one and, it, and all together because I'm doing like sections of game dev tutorials, uh, videos. So if there's like a whole session with, um, creating NPCs, I would do all those sessions of the creating NPCs. Then if there's like this, which is creating pro and switching scenes, I did the whole thing and that was six hours of footage. Along with a lot of interruptions. <laughs> and a lot of, I gotta go to work, I need to go to sleep now. <laughs> so I, I it, uh, how difficult was it? My brain sometimes couldn't process it. But I think my gridding is screwed. No, I, don't, I can't even say I think my gridding is screwed. I know it's screwed. So I might have to redo this to where the grid looks a lot better. Because game does grid is 20 by 20 and perfect. Mine does not. And I've been trying to change some of my uh, towel panel, towel palettes, and they don't match up either. It's really tedious to try and get map, map tiles to work for me. I'm still learning that. I want to get that down pat, but it's mostly probably just my tiles are off right now. So I have to figure that out first, which is definitely annoying. But like I said, this is just a place. This, this 2D thing is just a placeholder, so I'm not going to like go too far into it because that that would be very annoying <laughs> to go like that far into it i'm sure there's a way we can uh <laughs> we can just switch all this over if there isn't i will i will pressure myself to fix it or i will have somebody on fiverr help me get it down pat and fix everything teach me a little bit of stuff this is my first time making a game so you guys gotta remember that it's not gonna be easy of course it's not gonna be easy because you know it's, it's game development Game development is one of the most tedious but fun things you can do. It it requires a lot of brain power. That's let's just say that. And as you can see, everything here has a meaning, which is even more annoying to try and connect it and learn how everything works. But it was it's been quite a fun journey though. I will say that. We fixed the we're fixing also a lot of other coding and layers too so we're changing uh player field of view i don't plan on like making too many other tiles maps unless game dev says so because i don't want to make like a whole bunch of tiles so it's just like oh time to change those Cause that would suck. <laughs> okay, so this one is learning how to create other scenes and switch between them, which is the whole portal system. We set up the portals, but we have not well, we set up the basics of the portal, then we set up the layers, and now we're actually getting the portals to function, is what we're going for here. Huh. Anyhow, just a little bit of, you know, telling. There will be a pixie forest, it just won't look like this, this is just a placeholder as we're switching the scene. 
So I just draw some random shit there and just call it boom. It's 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 a map. <laughs> I just needed something to continue the tutorial with. And by the gods I did it, okay? So they don't don't tip me. Anyway. <laughs> So we got hometown and Pixie Forest. We won't actually be named Pixie Forest. I have a couple of other names for that. I have a lot of ideas for things to be around that forest. So now we're going to have the load, Lotus Sync. We also got to put in, I forgot, this is another tedious thing I have to remember every time, is that I have to drag any new scene I add to the game into here. That's something I always got to do so the game can process portals and know what, and know what portals has to go there. So now it knows what scene to load. As you guys saw here, these are the scene numbers. So if I put zero, that portal is going to lead to hometown. If I put one, that portal is going to lead to pixie forest. So this is where this uh, data field comes from. Sterilized field. Then we're going to add some more stuff down the road to it. Don't know if I'll be here to explain that. That's <laughs> my brain. Each of these took like, I would say, an hour to do. Except for the feet, the screen fade stuff to add like immersion to it. That took like, I think, 20, 28 to 25 minutes. So now we're making the essential object so we don't have to keep dragging items into the scene so it could be a little bit lazier. <laughs> so essential objects. So now this stuff is going to move. Everything I just put in essential object was a player. So now this stuff is going to move to the next scenes so I don't have to keep moving them all together. It's going to be an actual like thing that travels through the game. So now we have it to where it doesn't destroy. We're trying to set it up to where it doesn't destroy itself when I go to the next scene. I don't have the spawn point set, so it's going to be in the random abyss over here. Okay, I just moved the scene there. I forgot about that. Because everything's not centered. So now we're making a spawn point to where 
once we hit that portal, it'll spawn us at this little point right here once we're traveling through. Which is going to be interesting to make that inside of 3D. So I'm curious how it's going to work in 3D. Oh, I'm going to turn on music here. Just for myself. You guys won't be able to hear it. Only I will. Actually, it makes me think a little bit more when it comes to, like, these videos. But yeah, I made a debug just to see it work. Now it does destroy the next scene once I go to it. So the portal isn't a one time use is basically what it's saying. The portal will, uh, will stay there instead of destroying itself. This is supposed to be objects, not object. He said object in the video, but then I looked at it, went back and looked at his coding and it said objects. There's two different kinds. And the sad part is that. Yeah, this. Studio doesn't pick up on this. Studio has its own ideas of what it thinks you're doing. I think there was something else I was missing too. Oh no, I just had to retype first. That's what it was. Okay. Making sure it moves the player to the next spawn point. This does create some weird bug that we've that we end up fixing later. You guys are probably thinking, why am I still walking or something? I think it happens during this, right? Now we're setting snap positions for anything we put on the game. Which mines is kind of screwed up considering, like I said, my tile set is my tile maps are kind of screwed right now. But it doesn't really matter if we're going to be switching how we make the game anyway. I move the player so it could just be closer to the portal. And test out this whole snapping situation. <laughs>
Even though I want to take out the snapping system sooner or later. I think I'm thinking a freedom more of a free control is nicer, but it does cost less just to make like a couple of sprites. Up oh, there it is. My character walked to that to that uh location, and not only that, it caused a duplicating bug with the portal, which we fixed in this video, and auto walking to the portal that the previous spawn point was in. And may portals connect to other portals. So certain portals. So you guys saw that that portal was connected to Pixie Pixie Forest. And now we're going to make another one that connects to a different side of Pixie Forest. I just thought about it. This is going to take forever to uh, render out. <laughs> but yeah, we're fixing that, uh, Duplication bug right now. The name was spelled wrong on that, so had to actually re-add the name. Now this lowes item. But now portals isn't working. Could it be that I did something wrong, or did I forget something? Huh, I wonder what it could be. Uh, could it be that I forgot the spawn points? Yes, yes, that's, that's exactly what it is. I forgot to move the spawn point into this. <laughs> Now this point point is working. Now I should be able to travel to the forest. And there goes that uh, auto move bug. Yeah, I had to make sure I had, it didn't freeze or anything. I thought it froze at first. I was like, oh no, did I break it? <laughs> I forgot what I was trying to do here. Oh, I was trying to change the spawn point of where the character started. That's what it was. <laughs> So 
So now we're going to be switching the position of the character just walking. Uh, this is mostly going to be, I guess, scene transition fix for when we go through the portal. So as soon as we go through the portal, it's going to pause our character to where they stop moving until like it's fully completed. The transition is fully completed. There we go. No more running all the way to the previous spawn point. That's gone. No more of that crap. Now we made another portal and now we're going to be learning how to connect those. Which, if I go through this portal, it all takes me back down to this portal, and they're just randomly connected. So, we're making it to where one of the portals is going to take us to a certain one, and the other portal is going to take us to another different one. So we're going to be connecting them through like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you know, stuff like that. Which was actually pretty nice to learn because that was also another thing I kind of wanted to learn down the road. Okay, so now we're going to be working on the whole switching scenes to where it fades and, you know, creates more immersion. And we learned how indoor building methods work, which was rather interesting. But one of the things towards the end was very interesting that I didn't think of towards like developers doing. Which was pretty interesting. But yeah, we're making this whole little panel, well, this whole little screen that we're going to be turning black. For some reason, it didn't stretch out, so I was just like, screw it, I'll just stretch it out myself. It still works, okay? Don't worry about it. We changed it black. We changed the alpha to zero, so it's going to, you know, come on and come and go off. This one actually was extremely easy to learn, especially with Dotween. To be honest, Dotween is actually extremely easy to learn. For like fading in images and fading out, stuff like that, like zooming, stretching images.
Okay. So now we're going to test it. And there's a little bit of a fade for when it goes out and goes in. You guys just won't see it, like, too much. Yeah, this is where I was trying to put my character back in the box. But then I realized not all the scenes are the same. Not all the grids are the same. So, yeah, this is, this is something I kind of gave up on that we can kind of skip through. <laughs> Okay, it actually gets there to where we skip through it. I was just trying to put everything in the freaking boxes, but yeah, that didn't work out too well. So I was like, fuck it. Spelled off. Spelled very off. But anyway, we started going to the indoors now. Making indoor scenes. And we started making more layers. Was this pretty straightforward? It was basically like parallaxing, but more tedious <laughs> because of the snapping. And plus, you can't move like individual items. That's the thing I hate about Unity is that you can't just put in a towel and move it slightly by itself. Just putting in that one tile is not movable by itself. And you can't make something transformable to where you can just shrink it by itself. Which is just really annoying. I shrinked it down, but as you guys can see, my whole grid is also shrinking with it. That's the issue. So now this grid is screwed and my tile sets don't match this anymore. <laughs> so yeah once I go back and look through all this this is gonna be fun trying to delete all this and make something that actually you know fits but I think it'll be easier because I can actually change individual objects inside of 3d but I've learned something that is gonna be extremely interesting that 3d is way easier to do than 2d 2D comes with a lot of tedious stuff and remembering. I will say that. 2D, I feel like, is cheaper in a way. No, probably not. No. Well, no, 2D is probably cheaper, but 3D is a lot faster. I will say that. Let's say that. From like the pricing I've seen on Fiverr, 2D has been. A lot less cost worthy than 3D. So we just put a little bit of placeholders there. I'm gonna have this whole tile map made into like actual items I can put up. Gonna have them made into actual assets. So I'm curious how that's going to look. Once I figure out like how how I want it to be. I'm thinking about low poly would probably be the best way to do all this. Just to start off. Get a little bit of an envision for the game. Low poly would definitely be the greatest move to be honest it's a lot cheaper and faster to be honest i could probably make those myself but uh that would be a lot more time consuming than i needed to be because i could also be working on putting more stuff in the game instead of making actual stuff to where i can have somebody else make it as i'm working on the game so yeah <laughs> it all comes up to budget you know if I had to budget myself a little bit too much, I might just try and learn how to make it myself. It would just make the game last a little, well, a lot longer, to be honest. I don't, I don't plan on having this game out like anytime soon, especially with the progress that I'm going through. Shit, I'll, I'll see you guys in like five years. <laughs> Considering I have a lot of plans. 
And we have a lot of Monster Girls to go through. Speaking of which, I'm going to be having another poll sooner and later down the road. Well, actually, I'll probably have another poll as this video ends, actually. Because the Owl Girl is almost done. The thing that you guys voted for. There's something I coded wrong here. That's why you guys see that I moved these collisions up. Because the character is supposed to be standing over the objects a little bit. To where it's, you know, you're up in their face. But I think I coded something wrong. I have to go back and look through my collider codings. Which is going to be fun to figure that out. I also learned that the, this collider is right here is going to work because there's colliders on the fences. That's what I was talking about, like, they're a little bit too close. And I can't get in the house even with this on because my collisions are too big. The only thing is Unity has a lot of flaws when it comes to, like, collision. Because you can't just randomly play with the collision itself. Well, I haven't figured out how. It seems like you used to could do that in like older versions where you could just click the collider and move them. But here, I haven't figured out how the fuck to do that. Because I would love to just move these colliders into right here to where the character can just walk over them. Walk to the door and just be like, oh, okay, we went in. Or sit on this bench right here. But I have to take that freedom away real fucking soon <laughs> because of that. Yeah, I did it here. I don't remember how. I think I might have to go back to the collision video. That, that will probably fix it. Maybe that was something I did. Either that... No, I think I made separate layers for it. Never mind. No, I made separate layers for it. That's what it was. I thought it was just my collision box being too big. No, it, it was nothing to do with my collision box. It's something in my code that I'm not paying attention to. <laughs> so yeah, then I tried changing the size of images and seeing like if anything works there. Yeah, we're going to skip this because we're not going to talk about how the, how long this took. I'm still on this. I thought I cut that out because I was uh, actually re-putting in a lot of my tile sets trying to fix this and play around with it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that's that's the next session. So now we're learning how to make adaptive scenes and making them load and deload when they are connected and not connected. So basically what this is, is when I go to a certain area and there are two other areas connected to that, it's going to load those areas so I could just walk into it so it can look seamless. Then if I walk out of that area and I'm in the area that's no longer connected to those two scenes in that one area that I was just in, those go away. You guys will see an example of that. Which was actually interesting to learn because this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video, how Pokemon did it. And this is going to also be tedious to remember because we're going to be putting everything into gameplays. If I want to do a adaptive uh, 
Scenes, excuse me. But I'm not sure if I'm going to do adaptive scenes for my uh, 3D. Because I, I want to, well, I kind of want want to know like how how powerful is my PC to not do this <laughs> that's the real question because I'm gonna have to take out town maps I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to take out town maps at least So this is going to be the transition to where it will tell you what area you entered. So we're making a hometown collider. That's going to be a trigger. And this trigger, once you walk into it. Oh, well, yeah, once you walk into this box, this trigger right here is going to be on. It's going to be like you're in hometown. Then when I walk up here into Sprite. Uh, to Pixie Forest is going to be like you're in Pixie Forest. So that's how Pokemon did their whole in the left corner bit is added in colliders, which was actually extremely interesting. Now my my <laughs> colliders aren't gonna be perfect because mines aren't shaped. This is when I realized that my game is a lot smaller than game devs because I am a fucking idiot. We're not going to talk about it. Don't shut up. Anywho, <laughs> I thought I was doing it a, a good way. I was not. I have to redo it. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> That's all I can fucking tell you. Anywho. We have to make the box. And there you go. So now it's inside a collider. That'll let me know that I'm in that area. And for some reason, I'm still trying to get it perfect. It's not going to be perfect. We're going to delete this later. Well, stop, stop, stop touching it. We're going to delete it later. All right, dude. Stop. St you're still touching it. Stop it. Anywho, <laughs> now we turn on trigger and now we have to start coding that stuff in. To where it tells us what area that we have entered through scenes through an ad adaptive scene a lot of my brain power is going and disappearing here <laughs> i'm trying to figure out like a lot of details within like this hour of the session because <laughs> i don't want to just disappear and not explain to myself when i go back and watch these videos what i've done okay we made a collision tag so once the character touches this box it says hey you're in this area Also, if you made it this far in the video, please do remember that these are placeholders. <laughs> this this doesn't represent anything in the actual game. <laughs> this is only just learning the basics of everything I shall need just to progress through all this bullshit. <laughs> I have a lot of things that I have to do. I will fucking say that. It's going to be a long journey in progress. All I can say is I can't wait for it to be over. <laughs> Just have all the core mechanics done so I can start building 
and getting everything looking nice and learn level design. Level design is the most thing I'm looking forward to because then I can start ordering assets from Fiverr people. By also mixing it with like a little bit of a style that I want to. And I want to later down the road learn the particle system and see if there's an easy way to do that. I gotta set through it and shortcut it. Don't fucking question me. <laughs> Just deleted those, that's fine. You know, it fits, okay? Uh, anything to make it fit. So now it, it processes me going into this, this sprite forest and the uh, home forest. I like how I named it Sprite Forest after this Pixie Forest. I don't know. As soon as I named it Pixie Forest, Sprite Forest came into my head and then that's just been going on. <laughs> I just realized that. Huh. That's that's interesting. <laughs> I gotta change that. I don't know why I put addictive as well. My brain turned off when I was making those uh, scenes. <laughs> so they're pretty addictive scenes, okay? <laughs> I think I put that in the fucking title as well. Had to make sure I don't do that. <laughs> Goddamn, dude, these addictive scenes got me itching. <laughs> I did enjoy this part of seeing the scenes load in and load out, which was actually quite unique. It's just a tedious ass process to keep doing this and remembering to do that. It's going to have to be a muscle memory thing. That's mostly what it is. This was saying it wasn't the build. It's because I didn't connect something inside of here. If I remember correctly. There you go. I had to rename them because apparently the space was not helping anything. I realized that I called oh yeah, I did change it. Because I realized I called it Sprite Force and the game needed to know the actual like scenes that I'm going into. That's why the error was popping up. That's what it was. Now I remember. So if anything, don't put any spaces inside of your scenes. <laughs> So the game would be like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Stop. <laughs> oh yeah, I couldn't figure out what this was. Down here. It was saying this was inefficient. So this right here was inefficient. It didn't show up in game devs uh, video. Because he didn't have this up. This was saying green for him. And it doesn't show up in anything else. But it says this is slower than built-in compare tag method. Which I guess is fine, doesn't really matter. Because it still works. So if anybody have any details on the built-in compare tag, do let me know, because I've never used it. Like I said, new developer here, still learning. Throw some brain knowledge at me, that will be great. And what better way is to start, you know, creating, recreating and creating games. Time over and over and over and over again. Until it's fully into your brain. I think I'm mostly looking forward to trying 
there, it's on my list, but I want to try and make a night and day cycle. I think that's the most thing that's on my mind right now. Okay, so now we're doing the second town to where we can actually see the full-on loading and deloading process that goes on. Which was actually pretty freaking fun, I want to say that. As soon as I did it, I was like, oh my god, dude, I did it. That's so cool. <laughs> now I gotta process this into any other game I make. <laughs> Which I do plan on making quite a bit of 2D games on the road. Just not right now, okay? Not right now. Not right now, dude. Not right now. I just put that mud right there just to make it look distinguished from the other village. <laughs> Like I said, placeholders is not, not, not the finished product, or going to be the finished product. Everything here will be deleted and changed. Bam, I walked in here. Now what? So now that I'm thinking about it, all the, all the tile sets, everything that's in my coding that's called tile sets, what would I change that to? Because I'm going to have to delete tile sets. And the code is going to stop working because I deleted the town set from that coding. So now I got to learn down the road of what I'm going to replace it with. Am I going to replace it with solid? Am I going to replace it with one of my layers? That's going to be the fun part to learn. Because <laughs> there's quite a bit of things labeled as a town map. Maybe I'll have to delete them and come up with another method. All together. Which will be very, very interesting. Okay, I guess, uh, like 10, well, 13 minutes. I can survive that, dude. I survived a whole hour talking about so much random crap and the game. Okay? <laughs> Don't ever say I can't stretch nothing out. <laughs> I also gotta change this screen. That screen looks atrocious. Well, that camera. Player camera looks terrible. Thought about making another game that would support this game being made, but I can't come up with any good ideas at the moment. <laughs> okay, so now here goes the last uh, few minutes of the video, and this is where we're going to be learning uh, learning indoor adaptive. So is going to go to another scene that's already on the map, you know, stuff like that. So it's, how do I say it? It's to do seamless, I guess, is the way I would say it without it having to load in the next scene and going back out, you know, any loading issues, you could just, boom, teleport into that area and just be like, you didn't have to load it in. That's what an adaptive is basically at that point. <laughs> So that's what we're going to do with the indoor to where it teleports us down to the side where the actual house is on the map. You guys will see what that means. Uh, fixing wild encounter bugs that came up inside of uh, inactive mount um, mapping, which was basically any area that I like copied and pasted the, um, the collisions, the collisions, I think kind of screwed it no i think it was the capture system. no adaptive because it, no okay I, yeah it was adaptive because the map area like script that i had goes to the first area that i spawn in and it's just like okay everything that's in there should go over here where i am so we fixed that as well 
and we learn how to make invisible walls inside of the player housing. So this was the funnest thing for me because I never thought about that. But in the 3D version, I won't be using that because I don't want you to see a bit there. <laughs> no, no, yes, I will. No, so I will. I, I won't have it like straight up first person, maybe. Maybe I'll have big enough walls. I'm not actually sure about that, actually, now that I think about it. That's something I'm going to have to look into. What's going to be fun is fucking using the material system like I did and did for one of my uh, avatars. My old VTuber that I don't have access to anymore that I know of. It probably is on my PC somewhere. I just don't use it. Why am I still trying to make this perfect? Dude, it's not going to be there long. We're going to end up deleting it down the road. Just, just stop. Anywho, that's around there. Now, there was a couple issues with this because I miscoded here. It doesn't actually like process this de deloading and reloading. I think it's because I still had a space inside of house. And now the game's also complaining about having multiple uh, global lights here. So I had to go in and delete one of the global lights, which was in my town. Now it's gone. Boom. Now, now this works. Wow, look at it. Magic. But now this area doesn't load. Because I didn't connect it to that place. So now that still turns off, turns back on. But this is still up. Because I'm a dumb dumb. Come on, Wolf, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out, dude. It's in there, but you'll figure it out. Oh no, it's still not going away. Huh, what could I have done wrong? Is it the fact that it's named with a space? No, couldn't be. No, it's not. But okay, dude, there's one more there's one more way you can figure out what's wrong here. Huh, I wonder what it could be. Huh, could my small brain be smalling right now? Ah, there we go. We fixed it. There you go. You did it. Okay, so now that's done, we're going to be playing with uh, a location portal. So, yeah, a location portal, that's basically what the whole adaptive thing is now. To where it takes away the portal and just teleports the player to a different spot. And this is what I'm going to start using for puzzles, actually. Puzzles, houses, and stuff. This is actually very effective for that, instead of making, like, multiple scenes to where I port to this place port to that place, port to this place. I can just have them all on a map. So the most thing I can actually explain here is that this is very similar to um, Pokemon, the Sapphire, Emerald, and Ruby series to where you guys go into that lava gym or the hot spring gym. And it has those little teleporting pads to where you have to teleport to the certain puzzle and it ends you up in certain areas. That's the best way I can actually explain that of what I can use the location portal for and what I first thought of when he was explaining it instead of just for the housing. It's going to work just like the normal portal, but it's going to have a different method to it. Instead of switching scene, it's just going to teleport me to a different scene. So 
So, in short, the the actual amount of puzzles I can actually make out of this is going to be very fun. I just got to remember this script very well. And now it's it's working, working just fine, working as intended. But now certain things don't show up anymore. The game is being a little bit, you know, weird. Pretty sure he teaches us how to fix this, right? If I remember correctly. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> nah, I thought I thought it was this making it uh break. It, it's not. I think I uh sit on this for a little while just to try and figure out what was going on. Cause I thought I screwed something up here. Okay, yeah. No, nah, I just skipped over it. It's fine. <laughs> Cause like I, I was thinking to myself, it's it's like, dude, I'm I'm gonna be deleting most of this stuff anyway, so it's fine. So anywho, this is the whole issue that we have going on. You guys saw that I changed this area to the slime girls, and I have this area as all of my cat girls. I go here, and my cat girls are still showing up in this area. This is what I mean about the the wild encounters were kind of screwed up because going off of this map first instead of this. So I'm going to be changing the area maps. Well, actually I'm not. Uh, if I remember correctly, I just delete the um, component of one and just remove it to, so to the other. Yeah, I made all of them adaptive. And then I... Oh yeah, I was taking the um, area maps off of these main ones and putting it into gameplay. Then that started to work. I think this was just a placeholder thing because I think later down in his other videos, we actually fixed the actual issues with this, with the wild encounters. So now this is where we come up with the whole wall system to create invisible walls. Oh, yeah, no, this was like the spawn in the center of the towns. My grids aren't centered. So this is this was kind of useless for me. I still have to drag the little uh, character around just to get her in the middle. We will, like I said, this will change later down the road. So I'm not concerned. <laughs> I'll keep saying it. I, this isn't 
gonna be the full thing. This is just placeholders. <laughs> So now I'm just putting these here, just for the collision. You guys will be, also, some of you guys will also be interested in the whole boundary thing of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to be turning off tile map render when it comes to these walls. So you see we can't escape, everything's collided. Just keep people from going into the abyss. Now we're going to go with the boundary wall and disable this. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, this here is going to stay though. But I want to, but he said he wants to be able to see them why I'm actually, you know, playing. Well, no editing, but when I'm playing, I want the walls to disappear. I uh, could have done the whole coloring tile and everything like he did. I just, I just didn't because, like I said, my tiles are fucked up anyway, so wouldn't have worked out. Yeah, this is what I was talking about, the tile render thing. When I delete that, what am I going to... Well, actually, no, when I delete this, I won't have to worry about this because I'm going to have to delete this whole thing and replace it with actual, like, walls with a um, collision. So, I really don't have to worry about this. This this is something I could just remove and delete. This, this doesn't exist. Forget about this. <laughs> It is a nice thing to know about the whole wall thing, though. Just in case I make another game that is inside of the, you know, tile sets. So we're also going to be fixing the weird skipping that I'm not sure if anybody's been seeing it. The weird skipping of the animation when uh, you're walking through the grass, your character for some reason resets its steps as it's walking through the grass. So we're fixing that in any other situations to where that could occur with just copying and pasting one code. What is this? So we're going to all these four places to where this code is used. So now we shouldn't have the issue. Yep, we don't have that issue anymore. Everything's fine. And that's it. All of devlog 35. I did it. Yeah, I stay here for an hour. Commit. <laughs> Fully committed. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Alright. I gotta go to bed. Because it is fucking 8 o'clock. Well, 8... 27. I have to... I, I work morning shift, by the way. So, you know. That, that kind of makes sense of why I'm going to bed so early. <laughs> because I want to fuck myself over. Anywho. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next one. Until then. Peace out. Leave a like for all my hard work. <laughs> I'm trying to learn.